I think like many people, I first learned about biomimicry by reading Janine Benice's book. It was one of those things you read the book and you're just immediately taken by the concept. I first heard about biomimicry from my colleague, Amory Lovins. He had gotten a copy of uh, Janine's book and was totally inspired. I was at an, uh, a DOE conference in Washington and I was part of a panel. I don't even remember what I was doing there, but I was there uh, with my wife, Gloria. And after the first day, she came to me and, and we, I was gonna go out and have dinner with a bunch of the people who were there. And she said, nope, we're not going to dinner. I said, where are we, gonna, where, where are we going? What are we gonna do? She said, we're going to a bookstore. We have to buy a book named, called Biomimicry, written by this woman I met today who was just fantastic, Janine Benyus. Who? Bio what? So we go to a bookstore and I start looking at this book and I'm, I'm, I'm looking at it and I, I've probably read maybe I don't know, 20 pages. I said, this is amazing. The whole notion, this whole way of thinking was just amazing. The next day I met Janine and we've been, we've been good friends ever since. In 2008, we had been called to meet with this potential new client who was looking to develop a commercial property in Brazil in South America. And when we sat down with uh, this new client, he talked to us about his vision of having a building that was much more than just a building, that connected it to the tissue and the fabric of the city, as well as brought awareness about nature and sustainable practices. So. My boss immediately brought in the biomimicry material and introduced biomimicry to him and therefore to me, and we got the job. Biomimicry is this amazingly sort of, aha, that's obvious process where, where you see, yeah, of course that's the way nature does it. Oh, wow, why didn't I think of that? And yet you've got you know, billions of years of examples out there doing it. What resonated to me then and still is that uh, since I was born, I was born right before World War II. And after the war, this country spent all of its effort trying to conquer nature. That's who we were. We were gonna, we were gonna make things cold in the summer with a lot of electricity, and we were gonna transport food all over the country. So we spent all this time trying to conquer nature, and uh, the idea that, that this is wrong, and that how do we become more like nature? It's really adding another layer of knowledge or information to the design process. It's, it is the same design process we've always used since I was in college, but now we're thinking about it more than just about space, materials, people, we've really added nature back in that conversation, whether it's about biophilic design and addressing health and productivity, or it's about biomimicry and thinking about how we work with the larger ecosystem. I think one of the first things that Janine says, and she says a lot, um, which I think is very powerful, is how old nature is. And you can't really argue with that. You know, if someone comes to a meeting and says, how many years of experience do you have? Oh, I have billions of years of experience. And you're like, okay, well, we should listen to you. Integrated design and looking for inspiration were something that I got hammered into my head in design school. But it was always sort of looking for human inspiration or the aha from art or another source of building and biomimicry offers you this much more intriguing, wild, uh, wider palette to explore. At any level, you can say, oh, this leaf has a beautiful geometry. I'm going to extrapolate from that and make a hallway off of it. But you can also think, well, a tree has so many layers and it takes water in a different way. When you start thinking that way from a systems perspective, then it really opens up. And what's really key is the research that the Biomimicry Guild allows us to do in order to make things happen. In 2003, Rick Cook and I started our firm, uh, Cook Fox Architects, and the first big project we were awarded was the Bank of America Tower at One Bryan Park. It's a 2.2 million square foot building. When it was finished uh, in 2008, it was the second tallest building in the city, second only to the Empire State Building. And our clients were terrific, the Durst family and the Bank of America. And they said, we want the best building. Not pretty good, not what passes code, we want the best. It was a lead 
platinum building period. We make two-thirds of the building's annual energy on site, right there. So like nature, we're not, we're not looking at something 100, 200, 600,000 miles away, we're making it on site. And even better, we at night, when we're making more power than the building needs, we make ice. We freeze 44 big tanks of water and then at, at a critical time during the day when the grid is most stressed, we start melting the ice. So it's a local systems thinking process that is part of the biomimicry. Biomimicry can be done on different levels. It can be done on mimicking form, mimicking process, or mimicking ecosystems. We're getting particularly intrigued by mimicking ecosystems. And that, uh, for us, we've got a process we call built ecosystem reference standards. And that involves understanding the deep ecological history of a place, figuring out what services that ecosystem was providing. So what was the carbon balance? What was the mix of biodiversity? What was the hydrology of the site? And what we're finding with our clients is this is a much more interesting conversation. So we have one project, it's a three million square foot building that has one of the biggest carbon footprints in the entire state of New York. 85,000 tons of carbon a year. When that site was native forest, it sequestered 3.7 tons of carbon a year. So our client's response is, wow, saving 30% of the energy isn't gonna get us there. But going from 85,000 tons to minus 3.7 tons, that's an aspirational goal. So that's like the big level. And then at the same time, we're also looking at the product level. And so we, we have a program with uh, NYSERDA that looks at product R&D development. And so it's whether it's an air filtration system that's using biomimicry or a humidity control device using biomimicry, um, we're thinking about how we can sort of address the challenges of the built environment, integrating nature into every scale. Can biomimicry be applied to every project regardless of what the project is? Should it be? I think absolutely, even if incrementally you can push the status quo ever so slightly, I think it's better than what you were yesterday. But it's a mindset, and not everyone is ready to take that mindset in that particular moment in time. Biomimicry is a phenomenal problem-solving tool. It's a really good filter for asking questions when you're in the early stages of a design process. It's also a really good tool when you bump up against a problem that you kind of intractable in a design or in a process and say, ha, huh, how do I solve this? So go back and ask the question using the frame of how would nature handle this and use that as a filter to help solve a problem. When I went to college, architects were taught to design buildings and then give the building to an engineer and the engineer makes it hot in the winter and cold in the summer and that's it. And as a result, you see a bunch of buildings done in the 60s, let's say with stuff kind of stuck on the roof and things happening and louvers in the side of the building. And well, why would you ever want to do that? So if you start thinking in a very holistic way and integrate biomimicry and your team members into the process, it's going to work much, much better. If you're just hearing the word biomimicry or you're just getting introduced to it, uh, the first thing I'd always recommend is read Janine's book. And then, when confronted or given the opportunity to design a building a, and anything, just start thinking, what would nature do here? What would nature do? How would nature make two uh, materials stick to each other? How would nature um, stop the reflection of light? How would nature deal with these things? And I think not only can you do better projects, but you're gonna feel good. It's very hard to go from inspiration to materiality or implementability. It's not easy. What I would encourage you to do is to obviously go to their website, learn more, but then reach out to them. They're ready to talk to you if you ask a question, so reach out. For an architect that's really interested in this idea and wanting to, to learn more, um, you know, find others in your area that are interested in this idea and engage with them in this conversation because there's really no right way 
I mean, because we're all still learning and it's a continual lifelong effort. So the enthusiasm and the passion you have for um, working with nature and being inspired by nature will drive um, the designs toward that. And it's really fun. It's exciting to find those connections and build these ideas into your design projects.